Okay, so there's this popular conservative YouTuber named Hunter Avalone, and he recently posted a video about certain religious doubts he's had. So let's jump right into this. But I do want to talk about religion today, and more specifically, my own personal experiences with religion. I had more doubts, but it wasn't like anxiety kind of doubts. It was kind of like this gnawing feeling like, like, what if you're not really a Christian? You know, am I really a Christian? And I would pray. And for some reason, I don't know how else to put this. And I know I, I criticize feelings so much, but for this example specifically, I would pray, I would read my Bible, you know, I, I would pray to become a Christian, whatever. It wouldn't matter. I just couldn't feel it. It felt like I was saying empty words. Like, I didn't feel it in my heart. Like, I didn't feel like I believed it. Well, this is something I think a lot of Christians struggle with, at least periodically. In fact, Mother Teresa very famously struggled with this, so I don't really have a tidy path solution for you there. What I would recommend, though, is in addition to doing things that enhance your spiritual life, like reading the Bible and praying, that you also make an effort to expose yourself to the transcendent and to the beautiful, whether it's taking a walk in nature or listening to beautiful music, and also occasionally unplugging yourself from things that can deplete your spiritual life, whether that's playing video games or watching TV, or even just slavishly following politics, which I tend to think is really just so much mental noise. And then it was only about maybe last year, maybe the end of 2015, somewhere around that, that I really started to, I guess, look critically at Christianity. You know, I, I got to this point, I'm not really sure when I reached this point, where I stopped worrying so much whether I really am a Christian or like they would say things at church, like raise your hand if you want to become a Christian. And I kind of wanted to raise my hand, but I was sort of worried, like, what are people going to think about me? Like, I'm already supposed to be a Christian here. But I finally got to a point where I was able to just step back and look critically at Christianity and look critically at what I am claiming I believe. You know, I remember being in church and I would hear them talking. They would say something about God. I don't I don't remember exactly what it was. And I would I would go into I hate to use this word, but I would go into skeptic ugh, skeptic mode. Um you know, and I would be like, "Really? Really?" And and I was just becoming more and more critical, more and more skeptical of Christianity. Hey, by all means, skeptic away. I can guarantee you, however, that any question you have has been asked over and over and over throughout the last 2,000 years of Christian history, and has likewise been answered over and over and over by Christian apologists. Now, are any of these answers things that would be satisfactory to you? I can't guarantee that. What I would recommend, however, is that you don't get too self-satisfied with this posture of skepticism because there's a kind of arrogance to this attitude that you are the first person to ask these questions. So you shouldn't simply stop at, I'm not sure if this is the case. Rather, you should have the attitude of, let me find out if this is the case. Christians still criticize me. And when they do it, you can just hear the condescending attitude behind their words. Because it gets really annoying whenever I make a post on Instagram or make a joke on YouTube that I think is funny, but it's a little bit edgy. I get a bunch of these, you know, snobby, snot-nosed Christians coming at me saying, oh, oh gosh, Hunter, that's not very Christian, Hunter. That, that you're being unchristian, Hunter. Just shut the hell up, okay? That you can just tell they're standing on their pedestal, looking down, they just think they're so much better than thou. Well, I'm sorry for your experiences. I mean, what can I say except that Christians are human beings and don't have any monopoly on snobbiness or snot nosedness? I mean, I've been dealing with snobby, snot nosed atheists every day for the last 10 years. So moving on, yeah, I would continue to look critically at Christianity. The more critical I became of Christianity, the more I guess flawed it started to seem. And I'm a very logic-based person. You know, if something isn't logical, then I have a really hard time believing it. Hey, it's great that you consider yourself logical. I think most people like to consider themselves logical. Please bear in mind, however, that what seems apparent or commonsensical to you is not the sum total of logic. In fact, what's logical may have nothing at all to do with what's apparent or commonsensical to anyone. In fact, I'm telling you right now that what you give us here has absolutely nothing to do with logic. And I've kind of reached this point where I don't know how on earth, me as a logical person, I am supposed to believe that an all-knowing spirit who came out of nothing created the earth and then hears your prayers even when you close your eyes and pray them in your mind. So I'm supposed to believe that there is a giant all-knowing spirit 
floating around the earth that can read my thoughts. I mean, does this not sound crazy? Well, any position can sound crazy if you straw man it, but what you gave us here is not illogical per se. Uh, you say God came from nothing? Says who? Every philosopher or theologian I know of, from the time of Aristotle onwards, hold that God is a timeless, spaceless, uncaused first cause. God did not pop into being at a given point in time because God set time itself into motion. In fact, the only people I hear saying that God came from nothing are atheists. So if you're struggling with your faith, that's not a big surprise since you're already assuming things atheists assume. Now, let's get back to this other point you make. That an all-knowing spirit who came out of nothing created the earth and then hears your prayers even when you close your eyes and pray them in your mind. So I'm supposed to believe that there is a giant all-knowing spirit floating around the earth that can read my thoughts. Okay, so you're having intuitive difficulties with this notion that God can hear our prayers, and again, your objections have nothing at all to do with logic. But since you're presenting intuitive objections, uh, I'm going to give you an intuitive response. If you consider that God is an immaterial, primordial mind, he would be more fundamentally connected to the minds he forged in his own image than he would be to matter and space. Now, in your scenario, God is this thing floating in space, receiving messages transmitted from our brains, and things like space and matter become barriers to God hearing our prayers. These kinds of barriers fall away when you simply consider that God is mind prior to matter. Now, interestingly, quantum physics is increasingly making the case that it's mind and information rather than matter that's fundamental to reality. Uh, you might want to see inspiring philosophy for more about this. And this is what happened to me when I was in church. Before I came to this point, they would say things, and I would just think, this just sounds like a fairy tale. And the more I looked into it, the more I saw the starking amounts of evidence against creationism, Christianity. Hey, if you want to ditch young earth creationism, by all means be my guest. Many Christians, myself included, were never creationists. In fact, creationism wasn't even really a thing until 19th century America, so evidence against creationism is not evidence against Christianity. And besides being just generally ignorant to, to specific facts, I started to see other flaws in Christianity. And one of them, one of my biggest problems with Christianity being the way it seems to be a bit of a circle jerk. You know, Christians say, well, God is real. Okay, we'll prove it. Well, it says so in the Bible. And the way I think is, how is that any different than, than a feminist saying, hey, Hunter, guess what? The wage gap is real. And me saying, okay, well, why don't you go ahead and prove that? She goes, yeah, go to feminism.com. It's just this circular logic. It just goes back into itself. Do some Christians respond to the demand for evidence in that way? Maybe some do, but certainly not all. In fact, it's just ignorant to claim that no Christian has ever presented evidence for God besides it says so in the Bible. If that's all you've heard, you haven't done your research. But hey, if it's circular logic you want to hear, try asking an atheist to defend their claim that there is no evidence for God. Either they'll present you with a rephrased version of their original claim, or they'll shift the burden of proof back on you. And you know, I don't know if Bigfoot is real or not, but why do you think people who dedicate their entire lives to searching for Bigfoot, even though they've never found Bigfoot, are dead set on the fact that Bigfoot must exist? Because the more time you dedicate to anything, the more real it becomes. But just if it becomes real to you, doesn't mean that it actually exists. That may very well be the case. I don't see how that casts suspicion on Christianity more than any other idea a person could dedicate themselves to. A person could dedicate their lives to proving that God doesn't exist, and the more they do so, the more and more real God's non-existence seems to them. All it means is that each one of us should be more critical about the beliefs we hold. Another uh, thing about God, and this is a, a very typical thing said by a lot of the, uh, I don't know, I, I hate saying skeptics, but I don't know what else to say. God is what's called, I believe it's an unfalsifiable hypothesis. That's the idea that just if you can't prove something doesn't exist, it must exist. So if I say, you know, I can shoot rainbows out of my out of my finger, but only when you're not looking. You have your eyes closed. I can shoot rainbows out of this finger. Can you prove me wrong? No. Does that mean I can shoot rainbows out of my finger? Also no. Okay, A, that's not what an unfalsifiable hypothesis is. B, God's existence is not unfalsifiable in any case. And C, if you're going to claim that the only argument anyone has ever given for God's existence is, you can't prove it's not so, well, that's just ignorance on your part. 
Yes, people have given bad arguments for God's existence, just like they've given bad arguments for pretty much everything. That doesn't mean that there aren't good arguments for God's existence, though. Please acquaint yourself with them before making any more of these videos. Another thing I hear from Christians, anytime someone dies, you know, God has a plan. I know it's, it's so hard to believe this, but trust me, God has a plan for you. This is part of God's plan. There was one thing that struck me thinking of this logic, and that is 9-11, uh, the Twin Towers, and that very famous footage of the man jumping from the towers, plummeting to his death. And it, it was videos like that, and I saw that video and I thought, really? So God has a plan. Is that part of God's plan for that guy to jump off that building? I, I'm asking. I'm, on, I'm asking. I'm asking like myself. You know, is this, is that part of God's plan to just go for, for that man to jump off the building? That innocent guy who did nothing wrong, who has a family to jump off the building. Are you really going to try to tell me that's part of God's plan? And, you know, I think another common thing Christians would say is, well, well, God's going to use this to bring other people to him. God's going to use this horrible thing that happened to bring other people to him. Well, I'm sorry, but that seems like a really skewed God who's going to allow innocent people to die so that other people could, could come to salvation. And if he's God, why doesn't he just allow them to come to salvation without letting an innocent life die? Well, this is the first time in the video I feel you've made a complaint with real substance, so I'm not going to give you an easy pat response here. What I will say, however, is I think the saying, everything happens for a reason, is more folk wisdom than it is biblical or doctrinal. Why does God allow horrible things to happen? I think for any Christian to say God allows it for X, Y, and Z reasons is incredibly presumptuous. So, what's wrong with wrestling with a question? What's wrong with turning a question over in our hearts so that it accrues depth and meaning over the years, rather than just demanding immediate answers so that we could go on and play video games? If there's any question worth wrestling with, it's this one. So I'm kind of in this weird place in my life where I'm sort of, sort of torn, because it's like, one half of me doesn't want to let go of Christianity, because it's all I've ever known. You know, I know I bashed on Christians, but at the same time, some of my friends are Christian and some of my good friends that I've gotten to know, I have gotten to know them through church. And I just find Christian logic to be so skewed. And so like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> this whole video, I guess, was just made for me to say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I can continue to believe something that seems to have zero factual backing. No one's asking you to believe something with zero factual backing. Christianity has, from the very beginning, been an evidence-based religion, and yes, there is a solid historical case to be made for Jesus' resurrection. Now, you seem to think that you're too logical for Christianity? No, you're not. The most consequential logician of the 20th century, Kurt Gerdel, was a Christian and even has a logical proof for God's existence bearing his name. I find that a lot of people who are struggling with their faith already feel like they're too good for Christianity and have to condescend to meet Christianity on its own level. Well, hate to be blunt, but you're not too good for Christianity. You're like 20 years old, you still have a lot to learn. But at the same time, <clears throat> I don't know how I can just, you know, abandon Christianity and go over to atheism because I don't know how I can accept that this amazing earth and everything on it that is that is so unique and so so intricate could have happened by random chance or could have happened by an explosion or could have just evolved out of nothing. Well, now you're onto something. You seem to assume, however, that the choice is either between Christianity or atheism. In fact, I would suggest that you first weigh the evidence for theism and then from there weigh the evidence specifically for Christian theism. Uh, I've included some links in the description I feel will help you along. I will say, however, that while you may be reluctant to call yourself an atheist, you already believe things atheists believe. You believe that God is supposed to be this phantasm that popped into existence and is floating around in outer space. Well, if that's what God was, I'd be an atheist too. So I just implore you to keep seeking knowledge, uh, don't settle for easy answers, don't settle for these self-satisfied, mutually reassuring online echo chambers. I hope you don't take offense to anything in this video, and for everyone else, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.